I'm Bambi Francisco with this segment of Lessons for Entrepreneurs, and I'm speaking with Tom Gruber. He's the co-founder and CTO of Siri. Tom, thanks for joining me. Thank you. You have had a lot of experience as an entrepreneur. This is your third company mm -hmm. that you've co-founded. So talk about how you're bringing some of those experiences and learnings to your current position. Yeah, one of the, the, the biggest things that I've learned over the years is that despite the shiny objects of technology that get everyone excited, um, it always comes back down to how you're impacting someone's lives, mm -hmm. how you're actually getting into changing the way they live or work. And it, it, is, it's so, it seems so obvious, but it is so frequently forgotten over and over again. Um, at Introspect, we did a, a knowledge management system for corporations, a, a brain for corporations. And everyone was excited about the search technology and the, and the, and the networking and, and routing technology. But in fact, the key piece was uh, how we actually helped people collaborate worldwide. Mm -hmm. And simple things like being able to have, send a message that this person just said something relevant to that person. Mm -hmm. um, it was relatively low tech, but it was the key to the user experience. Right, right. And now we're doing, we've done similar things at Real Travel, which was a travel um, blog sharing site. Mm -hmm. the, um, the conventional wisdom was let's make people uh, write reviews and harvest the value of that. Right. And it turned out that the completely it's inverse. The most important thing was to make people feel good about sharing their travel experiences with their friends and family. And that motive drives the whole engine of, of participation. And how, so, and that's really interesting, it's really about how users interact with one another, mm. right? And yeah. learning that and understanding. So how do, you, how do you understand that? How do you not make those mistakes of focusing on the shiny object and really going back to or looking at the user. Yeah, that's, that's good. I mean, every entrepreneur faces this. Uh, we yeah. think about what are the, um, the use cases in mm -hmm. the world. Um, it's good product management to think that way in, in, the, in the beginning in product strategy, but, but really pounding down. Imagine the users as real personas, as real pe people with personalities. They're a certain age, right. gender, they do a certain thing. Remember, imagine their day. What are they doing during the day? And how does your product live into that? Right. And then it, from their very initial touch point, how do they even hear about their product? How do they experience it moving through and then how do they stay with it? Mm -hmm. So there's a whole um, adoption curve, as it were, of any of these products. Yeah. But always thinking it from the outside in. Okay. So, okay, avoid the shiny objects. Mm -hmm. what, yeah. else? <laughs> what, yeah. what other lessons? Well, another thing, which is sort of related, is it's, um, when we think about competition. Uh, it's, competition is good in a, an entrepreneurial setting. Mm -hmm. It validates the space, mm -hmm. you know? And, it, and being better than competition doesn't mean having that extra feature that's just a little harder to do, mm. you know? It has to do with exciting the usage of it, exciting the user. Mm -hmm. And so it's also very easy to say from a feature or technology point of view, um, our product is better than that product. And users never really care. Almost rarely does they actually line up a high-tech entrepreneurial kind of product mm -hmm. against a bunch of others and say, I want that one. Mm -hmm. It's almost always there. Everyone's in a growing space and everyone just needs to find their attraction in this growing space. Mm -hmm. And thinking of competition as your co-optition, as your co-evolving peers mm -hmm. in that space has okay. always served as well. So that, that's, that's two. <laughs> Do you have a third one? Or you can talk about, uh, yeah. uh, talk about a, a setback or something that you did that you just would never do again or something that's really, really taught you um, something major that yeah. you're applying to Siri. A lesson hard one. I mean, the all, and, and what I'm doing now in Siri is a very high-tech uh, return to the you know, venture capital-backed deep technology, uh, disruptive technology. Mm -hmm. um, this uh, introspect was some, sort of like that too. The problem here is always that you bite off more than you can chew. Because, but we self-select as entrepreneurs to do things that are hard or impossible to do. Right. And so of course. now when we ha we get we get our funding, we get ready to deliver. The key, uh, the, the failure mode is to, to try to do something that's beyond the complexity of what, what 20 people can do in a year. Right. And right. so we've learned over the years to actually design for buildability, design for the ability, design a product that can be built. Mm -hmm. uh, with that's 20 exciting. People, not with 20 50. Okay. Yes. Okay. And that's the, hard, that's the art of it, I think, in the end of, of architecture and art, uh, product design. Um, and and, it, and it's, it's easily forgotten in a large company where there, there's the pie in the sky product management decisions about what we'll build and we'll just throw it over the wall and we'll build it. But in a small company, you can't do that. You have to think of it from the beginning as what we're really creating is 
a company to build a product that a user base will, will use, and the evolution of all those bits in time mm -hmm. requires design for buildability. That's interesting. So design for your team and not design a huge ship where you need a bunch of people. Is that yeah. sort of Yeah, that's right. And okay, calibrate. In fact, design for your team is a really good way of thinking. I like that because yeah. you, you know your strengths of your team. Okay. You know, at, at Siri, we know we can do certain kinds of really heavy lifting in certain areas. And in other areas, it would, it would be, so we'll just make sure that we focus the, the, the effort around things that we can do extremely well and extremely fast. Right. Well, I really like that. Well, we're designing to do like 10 videos a day, but of course, that's only just one person. We're not going <laughs> to. <laughs> okay, Tom, great lessons and great advice. Thank you. Thank you. I've been speaking with Tom Gruber. He's the CTO and co-founder of Siri. I'm Bambi Francisco.